day um, study about the lip lung and bump. Um, um, this is the case, one of the case that I have learned a lot from the past one years. And the lady, 32 years old, um, she came to the clinic with the multiple eyelid bump. And for the whole, um, both of the eyelid, upper eyelid and lower eyelid, she have a lot of the uh, bump and she got the treatment for the previous surgeon, previous hypnosis <laughs> for uh, six or seven times. Uh, look on the right side, they have 20 lesions on the upper and lower eyelid. On the left side, they have 13 lesions on the eyelids. So, um, what's the next treatment? It's going to be quite challenging to get rid of the whole bump. Uh, <coughs> Fortunately, in the clinic, uh, we do have the mammography. So, comparing to the normal mammography and her mammography in the 32 years old female, her my movement can actually be lost for 70 or 80 percent. But look to the generally, it looks seems normal from outside and not seem so bad. So on 15, um, on February 2015, we do the uh, multiple peptotomy and for incision and curing and my womb expression is my uh, preference and intervention. Um, heart injection. So the surgery was done in the operation room and it lasted for one hour and 15 minutes. So this is a picture of a picture in 2015 and this is a 2016. The patient was fine after the first surgery and come back um, uh, only one week after the surgery. But she lost her up for one year because of the, her brain tumor. But she had not got uh, any further treatment for that part. Mm -hmm. So on February, one year later, she got the recurrent again. And at this moment, if you observe on the eyelid, you can see the swelling less than last year, but the, it shows a significant dilation of the blood vessel on the, on the kidney tissue, on the skin. Look microscopically um, so close to the eyelash. Last year, I did something. But this year, I'm not going to miss anything. So I take a look at the root of the eyelash. I can see the significant cervical dandruff on the root of the eyelash, and a lot of dirty debris. And that means the, a lot of toxic fatty acid on the eyelid. So I start to do the pulling, the pulling test for the shape if the patient have any bacteria or any dermatic infection on the eyelid. This is a picture of the electron microscope that shows the dividend. So in the clinic, we can do this test easily by um, whole grab of the chart of the eyelid, eyelash, and do like 300 CT duty for rotating. And make sure that the eyelid is not too wet, because when you do that one, uh, if the eyelid is too wet, when you pull out, the, the, the body of the dividend will not come out too wet with the cooling test. And after that, I have the, my microscope um, in my clinic and connecting to the digital uh, TV. And that's help, very helpful and that's have the impact for So the patient that if they have the demo day, I show immediately in the clinic that uh, you have the demo day. Basically, they have two types of the demo day. The long tail is demo day follicular and the short tail is a demo day previous. This is a picture show why the dimidate uh, infection inside of the hair follicle. For the past 10 years, I have, been, I have missed a lot for the dimidate infection. But for the past uh, six months, I did a lot of the pulling uh, tears. And it showed that you can see the uh, moving body inside the tail of the dimidate. And you can see um, a tiny baby of the dimidate inside. And um, basically, the demodex living in the hair follicle, in the skin, but they uh, live life span about three weeks. And every time they have the, they sleep on the, uh, on daytime and come out on the skin on nighttime. And this is the video show how the demodex try to uh, feed themselves by eating the toxic free fatty acid. In this case, the, the lady, 32 years old, have significant um, uh, engineer and post-year 
but for the first treatment, they miss the demon egg. So that's why um, the, the problem come again. And this is show the uh, second surgery that they decide to go in again. And the patient um, uh, want to get the immediate uh, improvement, so she asked me to do the surgery at last year again. Uh, we put her in the operation room and put the uh, inject the uh, two percent cytokine like normal routine. And this is a uh, commercial uh, migraine expression expressor. And this is show um, what, when we try to remove the uh, toxic migraine inside the migraine implant. I have found that this technique is quite pretty helpful for relief the intranasal pressure relieve the toxic content inside the microbe gland, allow the gland to produce the new content. So that's immediately after the patient got this uh, treatment, uh, the patient feel much relief for the uh, pressure inside the eyelid. And, and we, uh, sometimes we repeat the, uh, the, the treatment every two weeks or every four weeks. Um, when we continue to do this one for three to six months, and we find that we found that the com the content of the microbiome can just so turbid to have the big improvement. After that, after we do the microbiome expression, we do the routine incision and curing. This is a one of the plan that we show how to do uh, the incision and curing beyond the conventional technique. I also prayed the surrounding microbiome plan that I expect the effect to <coughs> some, some, something like try to relieve the toxic mycum inside the mycum gland. I think this one that helps to prevent the further recurrence of the lesion in the future. And uh, this is a show the conventional uh, commercial <coughs> mycum expressor uh, from the right company. And I, I found that this, this uh, uh, instrument that uh, can squeeze the content quite pretty good. And, and the, the second type is uh, something like have the rolling uh, uh, on, on, the, on the tip of the faucet. And sometimes in the by theory, we can find the demodic brevis in the gland of the microbiome gland. But in this case, we did not put the content to see in the microscope that I should do something like that. And this is show um, and reflect the plan and try to do the uh, uh, curing and remove the whole content from the big um, uh, lesion. And you can see that the whole microbiome gland has been lost. And the problem in this case because she's only 32 years old and her microbiome gland has been lost for 70, 80 percent. The question is in the future. In the long term, in the next 70 years that she's gonna live, um, what's gonna happen? She's gonna suffer for the chronic dry eye problem, and she may suffer from the chronic infection if we do not get to the point, we do not uh, pick at the infection inside. So uh, at the end of the treatment, I decided to do the intralesional or intraductal um, uh, kinocrop injection. We use a 40, uh, per cc, and I inject a tiny amount of the uh, 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 steroid injection. Um, I review for the complication. Only one complication that was written in the literature is that the um, anterior and posterior segment of the eyeball is an ischemia. But most overall, no complication. Uh, and in my hand, is no complication at all. This is a picture at one day, one week, and this is before and after. And you can see the yellow uh, spot because of the restore of the kinocot inside. And this is show the picture at three weeks, the swelling sometimes pretty much. And by conclusion, um, long-term treatment for the anti appropriate refractive is required. And all parts of the refractive needs to be identified. The kissing inside lateral obstruction is very important. And if a regional steroid injection needs to be very careful. Thank you.